Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be when she pisses you off. I've got an email here from a viewer, and he brings up some good points and some questions on when and how you should address things with someone you're dating and they walk all over you or they're disrespectful to you to handle it in a way where you walk the line between being too much of a nice guy or taking it too much to the other extreme which is being a jerk and how you can let somebody know that they've crossed your boundaries and that you're not going to tolerate with the disrespectful way that they're treating you. So I got a quote that I'd like to share with you before we get into it. It says, if you love and respect yourself, then you will speak up and communicate your displeasure with someone when they take you for granted, disrespect you, or are rude to you. No one will ever do or say anything to you that you don't invite them to do. If you tolerate and allow other people to continue to violate your dignity and self-respect, you communicate that you are not deserving of respect. Therefore, people will give you none. Self-love means standing up for yourself and your values, not being a doormat and letting people walk all over you. So I've got an email here. Let's uh, just jump right in. He says, hey, Corey, I learned so much from your book and it really answers the questions I had about how to deal with situations that can make a guy miserable if not handled properly. Once you showed me how, it's easy and finally makes a lot of sense. One thing I want to ask you about, though, is how do you handle when she is the one who pissed me off? You did a great job teaching us how to open the woman back up when she's upset, whether it's something we did to hurt her feelings or just something in general. But when the woman messes up and you're mad, how do you handle it? Well, you don't fucking throw a hissy fit like a five-year-old and blow up at her and yell at her or say hateful things to her. So he brings up a couple of points here before I get into my explanation. He says, if you just take it and act like nothing happened, she will see you as a pushover and think she can repeat the same behavior. Absolutely. You're totally right. Because if you just sit there and take it and you allow a woman to disrespect you or jerk you around, change plans at the last minute, or blow you off like you mean nothing without any kind of consequences, without communicating that you don't like being taken for granted or in a particular – I'll give you an example. Like I, one of my clients that I was talking to today – in the past week, he had a situation come up with a girl that he's been dating for about three years. And so he was talking to her over the telephone and she was being very quiet, kind of short and a little bit rude with him on the phone. And he kept saying, baby, what's wrong? Tell me. Talk to me. And she's like, no, nothing's wrong. I don't want to talk about it. And she was just really rude and really nasty. And he got to the point where he just said, look, he says, I don't like how you're talking to me. You're being rude and you're not communicating with me. So when you're ready to talk and you're ready to be sweet to me, give me a call and we can talk about things. And she said, fine. And she hung up. And so he was worried that he wasn't going to hear from her that he had really screwed up. And I said, look, you communicated your boundaries. You tried to get her to talk. You tried to get her to open up to explain why she's pissed off. And she just outright refused to communicate with you. There's makes no point. There's no point in sitting there and talking on the phone for another 20 minutes, digging away when she's being a jackass on the phone. You communicate your boundaries and you basically left the conversation saying, "Give me a call when you're ready to talk about this and communicate in an adult manner." Well, he didn't hear from her for about two days, and then when she called, she was all sweet and she was willing to open up and finally communicate with him on what was really bothering her, and they were obviously able to resolve it. But like I said, in that particular case, she was just unwilling to communicate and instead of beating your head against the wall because that's not mature adult communication when one person's willing to talk and figure out what's going on and the other one just out, outright refuses to communicate like an adult. Because at the end of the day, if you're with somebody and they're unwilling to communicate with you, they're unwilling to talk and they're being an asshole about it, it, it you're not going to get anywhere. So that's the best thing to do is to walk away from the conversation because at that point she's being rude and she's being disrespectful and she's obviously doesn't have any intention of changing her behavior and plus she won't talk and tell you what's going on. Then you leave the conversation and you walk and you never look back and you wait because what's going on is she's now crossed the boundary. She's being rude and she's being disrespectful. And if a relationship is going to last for any period of time, you have to be able to communicate and express yourself, not only you, but also her. 
But if one person is unwilling to communicate, then you're going to get nowhere. And one of the things he was talking to when they finally did communicate, he says, well, if we're having trouble now communicating and you're not willing to communicate with me, what happens after being together for 10 years? And her eyes got real big and she really thought about that long and hard. And so he says his second point that he brings up is if you start chastising or lecturing her, it will only shut her down and make the problem worse and escalate to something bigger than it needed to be. Exactly. He was in a calm manner trying to get her to open up and she was being rude and she was being bitchy. And it was obvious after a couple of minutes that she was just, that's the mood she was in and she was unwilling to compromise. And so therefore he said, this is unacceptable to me because if you're going to, I mean, relationships are hard enough. And if you've got one person that's in the relationship because it takes two people to make it work, if you've got one of them that's unwilling to talk and unwilling to communicate, then you're going to fucking get nowhere. You might as well take a hammer and beat yourself over the head with it because you'll basically accomplish the th same thing. It's going to make your head hurt. And the third point that he brings up is if you don't act happy but don't address it either, you come across as sulking like a little girl. Absolutely. Obviously, if something is bothering you and you don't bring it up and you just continue to stuff that down with inside you, you're going to resent it. And eventually, you're going to blow up at her and create an even worse problem than it needed to be. He says, so when a woman is the one who messed up or pissed you off and it's something big enough to warrant some sort of action but not big enough to end the relationship... What is the proper way to handle it so she learns the lesson but things can get back to normal at the same time? Well, the key is to communicate in a loving manner without just totally coming unglued and, and becoming emotionally irrational to the point where you're yelling at, and screaming at her. The idea is to communicate, hey, I don't like the way you treated me. The way you're acting right now is very disrespectful and I don't appreciate it. I want to know what's going on, but now you're not willing to communicate with me. And if she just continues to be bitchy and refuses to communicate, you say, honey, I love you, but give me a call when you're ready to be sweet and charming and nice to me again because I I'm not interested in talking to you if you're going to be rude and be a jackass to me. So I'm going to go and you leave the conversation because you can only do so much. If she's unwilling to communicate and she's unwilling to cooperate, leave the conversation and let her reach out to you once she realizes that she was being a jackass and like sure enough like i was talking about this client of mine two days went by she called him and her attitude was totally different because in that moment he let her know that she was acting inappropriate and she was not he was not going to tolerate that and in a way she was testing his strength she was testing to see if he really had the balls to stand up for himself which of course he did and then a couple of days later she called and she was very sweet and they were able to resolve it and things got right back to normal and sometimes you have to do that. I mean sometimes women just get in a mood where they're going to stir shit up or they're going to be bitchy and that's the way it's going to be and if she's unwilling to be nice to you, the only thing you can do is walk away and leave the interaction but if you just sit there and continue to tolerate the bullshit, then you're communicating through your actions that it's okay for her to continue to walk all over you. And if you allow a woman to walk all over you, she's going to lose respect for you. And if a woman loses respect for you, she won't love you. And that's what ultimately leads to getting stuck in friend zone or basically becoming the male girlfriend to her. And that's obviously not somewhere you want to be. And so when, a, when you communicate your boundaries to the other person, they're going to realize that they were wrong and they shouldn't have acted that way and they'll come back and they'll apologize to you. But obviously if you're the one screwing up, then you need to admit it and own up to it and apologize in order for things to, to get back to normal. So if you have a situation or a question or a challenge or something that you're really struggling with, whether it's pickup skills, dating skills, relationship skills, quality of life issues, you want to get in better shape, you want to take better care of your body, you want to figure out what your purpose in life is, go to my website, click the products tab which will be at the top of your screen and follow the instructions for booking a paid phone coaching session with yours truly. And if you haven't already med, read my Kindle ebook, go to my website underneath the email sign up box, there's a box directly under that that'll take you, that has a link that'll take you right to the Amazon Kindle download page for my book. Now you don't have to have a Kindle device to read the Kindle version of my book because Amazon has created free Kindle e-reader apps for smartphones, tablet devices, and all desktop computers. So download whatever free app you need for the device that you want to read it on and then you can go ahead and complete the purchase of my book. And what's cool about their Kindle app is that 
what, no matter what page you leave off on, it'll be synced across all devices. So if you've got a Kindle e-reader app in your smartphone, you got one in your tablet, you got one on your desktop computer, you could have one at your desktop computer at home and one at the office. And the cool thing is all those devices, it will always be on whatever page you last left off on. And I will talk to you soon. <laughs>